Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps, and I just wanted to give an update. So this is kind of like a, a dev life update. And so I've been working on several different things, and this one was interesting. I got an email last month right before Valentine's Day that my Artwork Evolution app was going to be removed from the App Store. So that actually kicked me into high gear, and I ended up working on the app and trying to get it submitted back to the App Store, at least a new version, and it took a little bit of work. This is an app I started maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. It was a graduate research project. I, I, I think I started this in 2009 on Mac, and then I ported it to iOS, and then I just shipped it on iOS, and it's it's made over $2,500. So it's a, a fun little app. I've used it to create artwork. You can actually see, I've, I've checked one of the images here. If I just point my camera behind me, you can see this image right up there uh, next to my dog. That's the same image. I've printed that on aluminum, which is super awesome. And so it's this fun little genetic algorithms application that creates art. And I've used this, it, it's got mathematics equations under the hood that it just sort of evolves. And I've used this to create different sets of art. I've been in different coffee shops. I've been at art festivals. I realized it's really hard to sell artwork. I've sold maybe $2,000 worth of artwork, um, but I've spent a lot more on printing the artwork. And that's always the challenge, I think, as an artist. So this was a fun little app I did a long time ago using genetic algorithms and computer graphics. And it, it was just super cool. It was built with Objective-C and C++. So I've got this C++ backend that does all the rendering. And then I wrapped that up in Objective-C. So it was a lot of fun to work on. I probably went a little bit too sort of design focused in terms of the code base. Um, and it was really my first foray or second foray into app development. I pre previously did a remote control app for a robot. And uh, this was another experience. So this was my first app. It did pretty well on the app store. The first month, I think I made close to $500 for this app. And uh, it's all Objective-C and C++. So it was a lot of fun, but I had to dig into it and fix it for iOS 11, and it hadn't been running on 64-bit, so I had to recompile it for all that. I've been fixing a bunch of these issues, so I've got my log of all the issues. Uh, it's 700 words long already. And uh, so recently, I, I finally stripped out some of the old features, so there used to be this coffee table experience, and this is more, you can check out my other app, it's called Photo Table, that has this sort of table experience, and I used to allow you to sort of drag and drop, and there's like this containing view. It was super weird. Uh, it was sort of a prototype UI, and I don't think most people got it. So I stripped that out. It's now back to just sort of a collection table view style UI. This is more natural for a lot of people. And I've cut out the other features and I had to clean up a lot of stuff. I had to remove references to the old features, uh, cleaning up all my menu options. I even had this tutorial I built, um, but when I built it, I built it and there was only the iPhone 5 screen size. And we only had the iPad being a static size. And, and then since iOS 7, when I last updated it, We've had this explosion of different sizes, and that broke all of my collection view logic that I had in here. So you actually have to manually set the size of the screen. And I think there's more calculations I'd have to do. I wanted to have space, which I used to have space in between, but the, the different sizes, uh, something in that was throwing it off. So I was like, okay, I'll just simplify this as much as possible. I, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to show people the image and the text and sort of explain what the app is. And so here you can see some more images that I printed. This was at another coffee shop that I had the the app featured at uh, called Joe Bean Coffee Roasters. And they're actually the, the coffee shop that I get all my coffee beans from still. Uh, you can see my coffee stuff is back there. So I love Joe Bean and it was a phenomenal experience to have my app on display there in their coffee shop. All right, so I updated the app and it, I made it version three and it was really exciting to start getting the different emails. And I think I can show you some of that. So as soon as I submitted it, I was like, okay, I don't know if they're going to approve this yet because there's still a couple outstanding issues, but I'm reaching the 30 day limit. And I was like, I think I was right on the 30 day limit. So I had 30 days and then it was up and I was like, I got to submit something. So I submitted the binary and it actually got uploaded. So I passed the hat. There was a few things I had to fix. I think something was weird with my tokens. I really don't understand the provisioning profile. I have this really old account. So I feel like I'm in sort of this limbo period where I have the, these old developer credentials that maybe I didn't preserve. And so some of the code signing stuff, I got this one warning, but then I got this waiting for review. So let's see, that was 
March 12th, I submitted it. Um, then it was in waiting for review. That was good. Then it was in review March 13th. So that's one day later. And how much time was that? So that was at 1 p.m. on the 13th. And I submitted it at 11. That was a late night. Uh, I submitted it at 11-ish, so 11 p.m. So that's actually not bad. Uh, the next day, they got it into review, and they tested it and make sure that it works. And then I got this email saying that it was approved. It was ready for sale. And I didn't I didn't have this hold it from sale, so it's now available on the App Store. There's still some things that I need to fix up, and I'll probably polish that up a little bit. Um, but my biggest goal was to just make sure that it didn't remove itself from the App Store because I still think it's a lot of fun and my biggest issue when I updated to iOS 11 is that I hadn't updated any of my apps to iOS 11. So now I'm in the process of trying to get that squared away. I've got this one game I really want to get updated, but last time we tried to update it to the latest iOS version, it's a Cocos 2D game. We were just getting a black screen and I spent days trying to figure it out and we didn't get anywhere. So maybe I'll do another Dev Life video on that. Let me know down below. Click like if this is interesting. Um, so if we, if we jump through, I think... No, that's just financial reports. All right. So that was uh, the foray. And so um, this is sort of the the iTunes Connect interface. And uh, I had to do a couple things that I didn't plan on, and that's supporting new screen sizes. And so I had to make this screen work on different screen sizes. That was a chore. The The logic was all wrong. Um, I think one of the, the controls changed. And that's one of the issues that you run into with some of the older APIs is how you used to use the APIs the behavior might have changed. And so I ran into a couple issues. There's a lot of deprecated things. That's one of the other things I was running into. So I don't know if I can update this to iOS 11 with, or 12 without doing more work, depending on what Apple actually cuts out of the API. Uh, but it was a, a good experience. So just to quickly show you, let's take that one image I have behind me. Um, there is this one bug. This is not the right color, and I haven't been able to figure that out. It's been a couple hours sort of digging into that. I don't know why that button changes, but there's something weird going on with my logic. So I'm going to morph this image with, uh, let's go something colorful. This one looks kind of interesting. So I'm going to take this image right here. So that's the one I showed you that was behind me on, I guess I can't point right on the other side of me. And then I'm going to merge that using genetic algorithms. It's sort of, I'm using math as DNA and I can evolve these images. So that creates all these images and we can sort of see how they all work. Now, there are a, another issue where my scroll view doesn't show in the right position, and I need to fix that, but uh, that's more of a minor issue. It's kind of cosmetic. It does need to be fixed, but something else has changed in the logic, and this was a custom, uh, this was a total custom scroll view, I think, that I customized. This was before the collection view existed, so this was a lot of math and a lot of programming, and thankfully, I could just change some of the parameters to make it scale, because before, it used to be like, cut to a specific size. And so we we looked at that in a previous update, I think. But super cool. That's the app. It's now on the store and I've, I'm selling it for three bucks. Uh, this has made money in the past. I don't know if anyone's going to download it, but if you're interested, you can check it out. It's $3 on the app store. Um, and I think sales and trends, I don't know what this is going to show because I haven't looked at this in a while. Most likely, it's not going to have a whole lot of sales. And it looks like maybe I sold two units. Is that two free units or is that two paid? Oh, looks like I made some money. So that's probably the first time I've made money in this app in a while. Let's look at the last. I don't know if anyone's buying this app. Um, not really. So yeah, last year, it didn't really make any money. $18. Um, and mostly that's because it didn't work on iOS 11 and it's super funky and uh, probably doesn't make sense to people. But it's kind of cool because there are some other reports in here. And I haven't looked at this before. I don't know if that's what I want. No. Well, I made I made some money. That's kind of cool. There's some usage. I want app analytics. So this allows me to sort of see if people are still using it. And um, we can sort of dive into that one. So most of my apps haven't been really used much. 
But what's interesting is the impressions. And I really need to update my other apps. And so that's sort of next on the, the process of getting my apps in line for iOS 11. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit more work. They're all Objective-C. And now I'm working in Swift and my coffee app. I still want to publish that too. And then I, I took this break to work on this other app called Super Easy Timer. And that's a Mac app. Um, and that actually just got rejected. So I actually want to talk about that in the next video. Uh, but this one's already getting a little bit long. So I don't want to go into that now. But if this was interesting and you're interested in sort of seeing more updates about my own apps and sort of how they're doing, they're really not making much money. But at their height, like Photo Table has made over $16,000, which is really cool. It's a really cool experiment. Um, it's not making sales right now because it's kind of buggy and crashy and it's not on iOS 11 yet and it needs to be updated. So that's uh, another chore. But one of the other things I wanted to show you, if we just jump back real quick, I don't know if I can get to that page. I think this is the one. One of the things that really stuck me up was the, the version. So if we jump into the version, there's a lot of new fields and I actually had to fill out some new fields to get rated. And the thing that prevented me from submitting, because like I was ready to submit at maybe 9 p.m., uh, I, I had to stay up and actually redo all of my artwork for the App Store. And I did that all in Sketch. So I just created a new Sketch document. I think that's somewhere in here. So previously I had done this all in Photoshop and Photoshop is just not good for this type of stuff. So I had to start creating all these versions of my icons to get them updated. And I kind of cut out some of the features that I previously sort of toted because they don't make sense anymore and I want to streamline the interface. So I had to sort of recapture some screenshots and sort of scale up some screenshots and stuff like that. So that was interesting. And uh, I had to support different device sizes. So back over here, uh, what was confusing is I sort of filled out some of this information and it only shows me two of these devices, and I still don't understand why it only shows me a couple of these, but there were some checkboxes, and I could have saved myself some work if I had known that these checkboxes exist, because it's been a while since I submitted. None of this existed when I first submitted apps, and I just haven't been, I've been beta testing an app forever, but I haven't submitted it to the App Store, and that's that's sort of next on my plate. So here there's a checkbox to use the the larger one. So I just went with that. Even though I did make this one, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna use the, the larger checkbox. So that saved some of the time. I already had some of the, the images from before for the three and a half and the four inch. They look a little bit funky, but that's, I guess, the aspect ratio of those devices. I haven't I haven't used those in ages. Um, so I just had to remove one of the, the screenshots that was an old feature that's no longer supported. And then I was able to take advantage of using the checkbox to, to just make it work for these different ones. So there's actually a lot of content that you need when you publish on the App Store. And then I had to sort of rewrite the whole uh, information about uh, the app. So I went through and uh, just sort of customized that and took out anything that mentioned the old features. So that is updating my app, Artwork Evolution, on the App Store. I think it started sale in 2011 at the beginning of January. I, I can't remember if it was 2010 or 2011. I was working on it in 2009 and 2010, um, but it wasn't actually on the App Store uh, for a while because it took me a while to get my act together and publish. All right, so that is Artwork Evolution. If you want to check it out on the App Store, I'll have a link down below. If this was interesting to sort of see an inside look at what the iTunes Connect web interface looks like, uh, I don't think I can show you everything in here, but I can show you some of the stuff in here. So in the next one, I want to talk about my Mac app that just got rejected, sort of the process. Uh, I had a video that should have come out about sort of submitting to the App Store. And I want to talk about getting rejected and what we're doing to fix it. So that's going to be in the next video. I hope that you subscribe. There's a, a button somewhere right here, I think, that you can click on to subscribe. And then if you have any questions, just comment down below. I'd be happy to answer. And as always, uh, you can find my contact information down in the description below. So I hope that you're having a great day. And maybe you can work on some kind of fun artwork application or just your first iPhone app and publish it on the App Store. I will catch you later.